Hey guys, we're digging further into the Mythic Legion Soul Spiller wave today, taking a look at the Fury Clan Orc figure. So we've got him here in our standard Mythic Legions packaging. You can see him there in the window. We have got a write-up for this guy on the side, and then on the back of the package we've got that standard artwork we've seen throughout the past couple waves, and then you've got his uh, faction insignia there on the side. So let's do it. Let's pull this guy out and take a look. All right, guys, and here he is out of the package, our Fury Clan Orc. And I gotta say, this is another one in this wave. That's probably a theme throughout this wave, too, where I have gotten the figure out of the package, played around with him, and realized, damn it, I should have ordered a second one, because this guy is just cool enough that you need a few of them. There's no doubt about it. If you are into orcs at all with this particular line, this is definitely one to get, because, well, he stands out from among the pack, and then, of course, it's just a good figure. So there's a lot of cool stuff going on here. We're going to take a look at articulation first, as usual, see what this guy can do, see how he moves around. So we'll start at the head. And we, of course, have got the head on a ball, so it goes up a little bit. We've got down, bobble side to side, and rotation. The neck can rotate as well. It's got one of those, uh, you know, pieces on there that will allow it to rotate, but it's not necessary for articulation's sake. Arms go out. You can rotate them. We've got rotating single joint elbows, rotation at the forearm, rotation and hinge at the wrist. He's got an older style body, so he's got this single kind of all-in-one buck piece here. So he's just no diaphragm swivel. Goes backwards, forward, side to side, and then rotation. Legs go out, forward, backward. You can cut in the thigh. Single hinge and rotation at the knee. And then you've got rotation, rocker, and hinge at the ankles. And just like with pretty much every other figure that I've messed with so far when it comes to Soul Spiller, and then the more recent figures, he moves around really well. This so Something has definitely changed from Advent of Decay to now. They've changed the plastic in some fashion, I imagine, because there's no sticking joints. Stuff feels looser, but it doesn't feel loose enough where it's a problem. It just moves well. And it's a welcome change, so I have no problems with joints, no sticking, no rubbing, anything like that. He moves well, and the quality is what you would expect. It is, of course, as with, what, 95% of all Mythic Legions, it's the look that draws me into this figure. And it's the look that makes me wish I had a second one, not to mention the fact that he does have some cool changeability when it comes to accessories. But this guy just looks really good, and the Horseman did a great job with the paint applications on this one, the coloring, the shading that they've done, and just the uh, just the theme works really well. There's nothing new here. We've seen this this figure as far as configuration and parts go a number of times. And when I look at him, the first thing that jumps out at me is Keltus, because a lot of this figure is the same: the boots, the belt, the uh, the waist, uh, the loincloth, the forearms, the hands, the torso. The only thing that's really different are the legs. The, the legs and the arms are obviously a, a more human orc or flesh uh, legs. And then you've got the shins and knees that we see on figures like uh, who like the demons. They have those. So, you know, nothing new here, but it looks really great and it works really, really well. Now, this guy is, is among, you know, the Legion Builder type of figures because he's not a unique character. He is just a grunt or somebody to fill up your ranks, but I think the, the overall look and feel on this one is is pretty exceptional. The very monotone color palette when it comes to the armor is really nice. It gives the feel that he is just one of many when it comes to uh, what he's wearing, but everything has a nice patina, a nice uh, array of gouges and nicks and a lot of paint rub all over it. You can see he's got tons of wear and tear on the forearms in particular, and then you've got it on the kneecaps and on the feet. And then the uh, the torso itself is all gunked up and dirty and nasty, very much covered in a lot of black dry brushing. So I do like that quite a bit. And you've got that kind of worn, leathery look to the waist uh, waistband and the loincloth here. And then I love the buckle on this belt. Something about it just works for me. The little skull, the kind of asymmetrical skull that's on the inside there. It's just a great design. You know, again, we've seen all these parts a number of times through and through, nothing crazy, nothing different here, but the configuration works to sell the idea of a mostly armored orc who has still quite a few vital areas open, but it really allows that red skin to shine through, and the red works really well because they have shaded the hell out of these arms, and there's a lot of shading on the legs as well. So basically, just a nice overspray of black to bring out the musculature, bring out the veins that are sculpted into those arms as well. Uh, it's just a really nice look, and it makes him pop against the rest of your figures. And then, of course, we've got a head sculpt to talk about here as well. And if you saw my recent review for the Kalaros figure, this is a fairly recent 
head sculpt that I've dealt with because that figure comes with the same sculpt. This one just happens to be red. So you've got the red skin for the ears and the mouth and then the neck that's underneath that. You've got the gorget that's around the uh, the armor at the top of the of the chest here and it's pitted and nasty and, and it's just as gunked up and as battle worn as the rest of the armor. And then of course you've got those two bone white off white tusks that come out of his mouth. He doesn't look like a happy camper. He doesn't look like someone you'd want to mess with, but it all in all just kind of flows with the rest of this figure. Figure, it ties everything together and it gives you this kind of battle-hardened, really nasty-looking orc to throw on your shelf. Now for accessories, this guy comes with a healthy array of just fantastic weapons, but we do have a few things to change him up as well. So as usual, we've got pauldrons. These are some of the standard knight type pauldrons that are on him. They flow with the paint scheme, so very patinaed, very pitted, very nasty, very dirty and gunky. And then he has an unhelmeted head sculpt that has a very candy red bald orc's head under it. Very grisly, very evil, very mean looking. He does not look happy. You've got those bright yellow eyes and those uh, tusks coming out. So you do have a couple options when it comes to this particular figure. I generally t stand with the helmeted ones personally. I just like them, but this is a great head sculpt. There's nothing wrong with it. And then he does, of course, come with all the normal stuff, the strap, the back adapters, all the stuff that at this point I have way too many of, but he has a pretty awesome set of accessories. So we've got this monster sword here, and we've seen this before. Uh, we've seen this with uh, Morgolith, among other figures, but that's the one that jumps out to me. But it's done up in a very monotone look, so it kind of fits with his armor almost. It's a gunmetal-y with a lot of patina on it, a lot of black, a lot of dark, dark gray, but then a lot of uh, kind of paint rub on it to make it look like it's been used. We've got this big monster here, which this is one of my favorite weapons in the entire line. Uh, this is like the signature weapon for me when it comes to Brother Mandibulus, for example. So a big staff, it's got like blood splatter on the handle down here, some wraps, and then a very pitted and gouged monstrous blade up at the top. And just the design is really cool, and it's also very, very big. And then the last weapon that he has is uh, this guy here, you know, this kind of odd kind of angular blade here which has just kind of a gunmetal-y shiny blade, but then you've got a bone handle on it. Looks kind of like a femur or something, or uh, I don't know, a bone that I probably can't think of at the moment. And it's got a lot of rub on there, a lot of paint wash, uh, so it looks pitted and worn. It looks kind of like it's polished. It's been held and used so much that the bone is really soft and uh, kind of worn down a bit, which is great. It's a nice little touch to make it look like it's been used in battle. So as far as this figure goes, he has basically everything I could want. And what he does have is very fitting to a really evil, brutal type of character. So overall, this is easily one of the must-have figures when it comes to this wave. A red orc basically sells itself, but if you're even on the fence, this is one to get a hold of. It's a great figure. It looks good. It takes the concept of the number of orcs that we already have and just changes it up a bit enough to make it different while also meshing with what you already have, but then at the same time it very well pops against just about everything else on your shelf. There is a, a, a decided lack of red when it comes to a lot of Mythic Legion stuff. So this will be one that kind of stands out, or just make a whole squad of them if you want. If you're the army builder type, this will be one that really does a good service to your Legion ranks. There's really nothing wrong with the figure. It comes with a great array of accessories. Sculpt is great. Parts are a fantastic mix here, and the paint is really well done. So I'd urge everyone to get a hold of at least one. So that's going to do it for this look at the Mythic Legion Soul Spiller Fury Clan Orc. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.